Hi, this is David from Electric Teaching, and this is part three of building your own personal grapher with Python and Pygame. So that screen right there is what we have so far. We are basically have put a grid or graph paper on the background of the left-hand side of the screen. And now we want to start putting instructions on the right-hand side. But before we do that, there's one very important thing I forgot to do at the end of graph paper. So everybody come back up to graph paper if you've been following along in the series and add this line in. This is a very important line because right now we've clipped, we've left the screen clipped uh, for just the left-hand side of the, um, uh, of the window. And so what we need to do is reset the clip. So clip reset to all the window. And that's with a none command. So you're going to do screen same screen set underscore clip capital n o n inside the parentheses make sure the parentheses is tight and then that way when we leave the graph paper and you come back to your main function so right after we've called out the graph paper right here we're in our main function it'll be ready to go and using the whole entire screen and not just the left hand side so let's put some instructions on the right hand side. So we're going to be blitting instructions on the right hand side. I wanted to show you, if you notice my K was a little different, it was at 22. And I was going to show you how the, uh, the pixels uh, not matching, the 25 not matching the width, the width up here on the, on the uh, uh, width and height settings. If it's not a factor of the width and height, you will have some problems with the graph, so keep this in mind. Basically, the, this part, the x and y axes, end up being off a bit. So always keep this. In fact, let's put a little note. Okay, always use a k that is a factor. That is a factor of width and height. We'll keep that in mind so that when we play around and change this and personalize it, that has to be the case. All right, back to the labeling. So right after we do the graph paper, let's add in some labels here. And what I'm going to do is be blitting instructions. So a little comment in doing such instructions and results, as I like to say, to the right-hand side of the screen. First thing we're going to do is put a little title. So title equal. I'm going to use my font 2. My font 2, that's my serif font that I established before. We're going to do render, render, parentheses. What are we going to render and what color are the main two things? And you just have to give it, as it says right here, this anti-alias. And I just leave that at the numeral one. So what are we rent rendering? We're just rendering. Let's see, I'm going to make mine electric, little title here, electric teaching personal grapher. Okay, so this is my little personal grapher. Put in your own kind of name up there. Be perfect. After the quotes, after the quotes, comma, separating the next instruction, put a one. I believe that just stands for true. Um, and then let's see, I'm going to use my title color. My title color. And I don't think I've set up my title color. So let's go back up and double check that I've set up a title color. No. All right. Back up here. Add this in. Title color. You can choose your own RGB. I'm going to choose my RGB. Uh, let's see. Double check. My color I like to use in this one is a uh, 200 red comma zero uh, green comma 150. So a purplish again color. Okay. And as I made a little comment of dark purple, a darker purple. Okay, and now when it pulls up the title, it'll be in that color, the title color, as long as I spelled it correctly. Double check the way I spelled it and the way I wrote it. And I don't have to globalize the variable or pass it into the function since it's outside of the functions on the main line of instruction. After you create a title variable, you need to blit it. And that's the way that always works with blitting. You always have two parts. But, well, you could do it in one part, but it's cleaner in two parts to make a variable that renders it and then do a screen dot blit and you always blit two things two things you're going to blit what you just made the title so what and where in this case i'm going to use the width command 
the width command plus 10 pixels. So no matter what you decide the width is, even if it's 400 or 500, everything can be consistent, and this will be 10 pixels off of it. Comma, 20 pixels from the top. Since this is a title, this will be one of the top things. And please put in the extra parentheses. It's a very common mistake that I and my students make often. So we forget the extra parentheses. The XY coordinate needs a parentheses, and then the blit needs a parentheses, basically. All right, let's blit another instruction. Okay, we're going to have to be typing in the equation, so we're going to blit that instruction. I could be using, again, the word title or any, I could use the same variable over and over again. Um, it really doesn't matter, so what I do is I tend to do a couple of different variables, instruct equals, and again, what I'm going to do is use a font, in this case not the two, but the regular font, font render parentheses, and just the simple instructions to type, capital there, type in equation. Sometimes I, I make, uh, make very short statements so that it can fit on the screen, even though it may not be a complete sentence. And then a little example, a nice little example would be maybe negative three star um, x caret two. A note about the caret. Uh, Python uses two stars for exponents, so we'll program it that keep it consistent with almost all the other programming worlds out there like spreadsheets, etc., and use the caret, um, and then we'll retype it in as the double star for the computer, uh, onto the computer for, the, uh, for it to graph. Let's see, let's do a plus one here, and this concludes a little example, comma, one, comma, and I want this to be in my black color. So the last thing we do is a black. And now I'm going to blit it. Screen dot blit instruct um, what and where. So the thing I just made, instruct, goes right here. So what and where. Let's make this just a little bit below. Um, so same idea, width plus 10, comma. And I think uh, well, 70 pixels should do it. Again, when you start to personalize this for your own, you might want to change these numbers and change the size of the font to do what you need. I've even imagined this on a little tiny smart phone and uh, uh, tried to resize it to make it fit on a smartphone. And it, it could work. It could work. So if you want to turn this into an app, that's, uh, that's doable down the road. Screen, blit, instruct. Yep, we got that. All right, next thing we want to do is type the instructions to hit the return or enter key is, uh, is the way we'll call it, um, to, uh, um, excuse me, to uh, graph the equation. So what we're going to do is use the same idea. Um, in fact, to save time, copy, and also to make sure you don't make mistakes, copy, paste, and let's see, we can use the same variable, just overlap it, that's fine, that way we don't have to change it there as well. And we'll just change what is in green, and then we'll change the height so that it pushes it down a little bit further. And so what we'll do is we'll say select, uh, enter. So I'm going to put a single quote just to emphasize the enter key here. So that means if, if you're used to using a single quote out here, you need to use a double quote out there just to have a, a differentiate between them when, let's see, when done, or uh, let's see, I'm going to use K for clear, because down the road I'm going to use C for uh, cosine. So we're going to use K for clear, and it'll clear the uh, screen. So K to clear. And that's it. Same thing, one black. Let's push it down a little bit further. How about 100 pixels? And let's nudge just a little bit inside to make it look like an outline form of 20 pixels. Okay, so now we've got things blitted to the screen. It's very important that there's an update below this somewhere. There's a there's a, got to be an update in the while loop, and there is. So we can blit it once up here, and then down here it will not overlap it unless we give it a command to overlap everything on the screen. So we'll try not to do that. But what we'll get is this will blit on the screen once, and then this will continually update what is already on the screen. I like to put a little note of what this is. It's very important. So we are updating the screen. Okay, and we do this, obviously, as fast as the computer can go. So we're talking hundreds to thousands of times a second. Um, let's see. We've got all our instructions right now. 
Um, I think what we need to do is set up so that we can make the equation appear on the bottom right hand side. The equation to appear on the bottom right hand side. So that's the next part of what we're going to do. So I'm going to set that up. So start. And what we're going to do is use an array. An array. This is like a matrix um, in mathematics. So this array will hold. Okay, that will hold our equation. And what we're going to do is make a comma separated array. So the array will have as many elements as we want. We will use a command called append to add on to it. So what we're going to do is start with a variable named equation. And we're going to equal it to be an empty array. Arrays always use brackets. Make sure. I know the screen may not show this clearly. So listen carefully. We're using brackets for arrays. When I'm appending or using that the, the array, it needs to be in brackets, not parentheses. It's very important. Okay, and now down on the, what we need to do is because this equation is going to be updated every time we type in um, a value, for instance, if I'm going to type in 2 times x, I'm going to need it to appear instantly on the screen. And so what I need to do is I need to have the next action inside this uh, forever infinite loop here. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. What I'm going to do is if I keep blitting it over and over and over again, it makes it look really sloppy in the graphics, trust me. So what you need to do is you need to clip a white space over it and then re-blit it and then do it over and over again. And fortunately, the computer does it fast enough that you won't even notice it. So let's do a clip here, set clip, excuse me, screen dot set underscore clip parentheses. Now what we're going to do is we're going to do it to the bottom right hand side of our window. So I'm going to get down to there the width plus 10. I'm always 10 pixels off when I'm typing anything in so let's start there. Width plus 10 to the height that's the bottom of the screen minus 30 pixels. That'll be enough to hold our equation and make a, a, a well, a uh, white box that constantly overlaps the equation and then re-blitz it with any new information. I hope I'm making sense on that. So width plus 10, height minus 30, so that's the bottom right, up 30, to, up 30 pixels. Don't forget, minus means up in programming world. So then to the, let's see, to the bottom corner. So that's width plus extra, extra W comma the full height and that'll clip that one section and all I'm going to do is do a screen dot fill parentheses white so that it fills white then immediately afterwards I am going to put a little note here what I'm doing it's going to be joining the equation array joining the equation array and I need to join it without the commas so join equation array without commas, okay, and that's so that we can uh, put it into an evaluation part and then have it actually uh, substitute in a value and evaluate, or as I tell my students, plug and chug basically. So let's see. I'm going to make a new variable called eq, and that's going to take the array, that's the equation array, so eq equal string, neat little command here called string dot join. This is a Python command, I believe. Could be Pygame, but I'm pretty sure it's Python. String dot join equation, and that's going to take the equation up here, which is empty right now, but down the road we're going to add a bunch of things to it. And it will, it will take it and take out the commas and join it. Now there's going to be some spaces, <clears throat> so we're going to have to remove the spaces. So another neat little trick you can do with the strings of text. EQ is going to be put back, assigned back to itself after we do a replacing. So string dot replace, replace, parentheses, EQ, EQ, okay? So we're going to replace anything in the string, old and new, as it says right here. So what we're going to do is take quote, space, quote, comma, and then we're going to do quote, quote, no space, basically. So we're going to take all the spaces and replace it with no spaces. Hope that makes sense. Okay, next I'm going to, next I'm going to, 
Okay, so now we have to render, render. Sorry about the pause right there. So now we're going to render it. So put in a little comment here. So now we're going to render or blit, put render and blit the equation. <clears throat> so I'm going to use a new variable here. Let's see, I'm going to call it, um, how about EQ show? So equation shown. So EQ show. Do the font dot render. So we're using the same font that we set up before. And now we're going to render the EQ that's now got a, a joined an array with no spaces. Okay, and what we need to do is we need to take, we're going to render um, the EQ. Excuse me. Oh, I messed that up. Uh, we're going to use we're going to render that in a second hang on a second we have to first say function give it a little title function colon y equal space close quote put a plus sign and then the eq eq is a string so it'll just join this green text here which is also a string right there so what we're going to do now is say one that's the true statement and then what color we want it to be um, for now, I'll just go ahead and use my title color, my title color. Later, if I want, I can change this color. But for now, I'll just make it make the top and bottom the same color, kind of bookend the top and bottom and color-wise. All right, now we need to blit it. Screen dot blit parentheses. Blit the EQ show comma. And we're going to do the width plus 10 pixels. Okay, and then the height, just the same, basically the same spot we blocked out, minus 30 pixels. Okay, and let's see, I think that is it. Nothing will be in the equation, so but it still will be able to blit the green text right here. Hopefully I didn't make any mistakes. Got a little extra space here. Let's delete that extra space. I forgot to put a little command here, or just a little... Uh, note here, this is my kind of my active loop. So I like to call this my active loop. Sometimes I use a search to find things like that. And it's nice to have the comments there. Run the module. Save it. Oh, we got a syntax error. Yep, close parentheses. I mentioned that in the last video. That is a common mistake. Let's try that again. By the way, when you get the word highlighted and the word is spelled correctly, then it just back up. It is always the last part right there. And good. I think I've got mine working. Hopefully you have got yours working as well. Uh, have the, the color um, and the text exactly the way we wanted. Close the window. Okay, next we're going to be able to add the key commands. We're going to add the key commands. And we're going to have to do this in the next video because I'm over my usual time uh, restriction that I try to hold to. Not very successfully. And what we're going to do is do the key commands to put in the function and then hopefully get the graph going. I'm David from Electric Teaching. I hope you're enjoying this.